Most of the success stories we read are from America. But something tells me, in 10 years' time, in 20, 30 years' time, <laughs> we won't need to read stories from America anymore. Our stories are coming from Ijebode, amen. <laughs> Your own story will be heard. Your books will be read. In the name of Jesus. Let's be seated. God bless you. The fact that you're here tonight tells me a little bit about you. Because so many people heard about this seminar. But some... Their thirst and hunger for success was not strong enough to bring them here. And the starting point, the, the, the takeoff block for success is information. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And what you don't know, you don't know. It's the truth that you know that will set you free. When you are thirsty and hungry for information like this, it's inevitable. You're going to run ahead of your generation. Yeah. What makes you a leader is what you know that others don't know. And very soon, the difference is going to be clear. Yeah. While ignorance is running other people down outside, the knowledge of God will lift you up. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 12 says that if you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scorn instruction, you will pay for it. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scorn instruction, you alone will pay for it. Your being here is an investment. It will pay you later. In Jesus' name. Last night we were sharing the story of a man, Daniel, how to be first among your equals, how to become outstanding, how to rise in your generation. And this evening we'll be discussing from Genesis chapter 26 as we pick the story of another man. The story of another man, his name is Isaac. His name is Isaac. And I pray that this message will be an inspiration to you. In Jesus' name. More importantly, I pray that God will multiply this testimony in our lives. Genesis 26. And let's read from verse 1. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech king of the Philistines in Gerah. Then the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in the land. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. Verse 6, so Isaac dwelt in Gerah, and the men of the place asked about his wife, and he said, she is my sister, for he was afraid to say she is my wife, because it thought, lest the men of the place kill me for Rebecca, because she is beautiful to behold. Let's jump to chapter, verse 12, then Isaac sowed in that land, and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants so the philistines envied him praise the lord we ask heavenly father that you will add your blessing to your word tonight speak to our hearts 
Lord, I know that when you speak, things turn around. I know that when you speak, failure gives way to success. I know that when you speak, a lack gives way to abundance. I know that. I know that the power of sickness is broken when you speak. So, Lord, put your words in my mouth. And as I speak these words tonight, let your power break out over this place. Every hold and every form of oppression of the devil is broken here tonight. We receive deliverance. We receive salvation. We receive freedom. We receive miracles. We receive signs. We receive wonders. In Jesus' name. Say a big amen. amen. Alright. It says in verse 1, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. <sighs> you see, the first thing you've got to realize is that every generation has its own challenges. Every generation experiences its own challenges. They said there was a famine. This was the time of Isaac. Abraham was dead and gone. This was in the time of Isaac. And they said there was a famine in the land besides the one that was in the days of Abraham. So Abra there was famine in the days of Abraham. And now there was famine in the time of Isaac. And if I, even after Isaac has gone, in the days of Jacob and Joseph, there will still be famine. If I was a famine that allowed just Joseph to become prime minister of Egypt. So every generation experiences its own problems. There is no point wondering about the good old days. Think about the good new days. Amen. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 10, it says, Say ye not, why were the former days better than this? It says, For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. It's not wisdom. When you just sit down and instead of tackling the challenges of today, you keep wondering about the good old days that have gone. Eh? Like in Nigeria, we talk about the days of the oil boom. Days of Udoji Award. The good old days. Our parents had it good. Great. They had their own challenges too. And the interesting thing is, if you sit down and you want to use Nigeria's current situations as excuses for failure, you are doing too badly, too poorly. You don't have good enough excuses. Because there are people who did not break through during Udoji Award and Oil Boom who are breaking through now. There are people who could not, five years ago they couldn't buy a plot of land. Now they are building houses. There are people who were poor and wretched ten years ago and now they are millionaires. So the situation and the circumstance is not the excuse. Now whatever you may be going through today, by the time we are through the principles that got Isaac out, you will have laid hold on keys that will also get you out. Amen. 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 However terrible it gets, in this country, some people will still break through. God bless you. You will break through. It's a matter of choice. In the face of adversity, some people develop, some people go for crutches while others grow wings. In the face of adversity, people break into two camps. There are those who go for crutches. Crutches are things you have to lean on to be able to walk. And the crutches that most people go for are excuses. It's because of the country's economy. There is no job anywhere. There's no contract anywhere. There's no money anywhere. And it's not true. There's some money somewhere. And you can just make up your mind whether you will be part of the few that will get some of the money that is available. You know, you remember I was telling you last night that I made up my mind that if they pound Nigeria's yam inside leaves and they prepared soup inside small granite shells, I'm going to be satisfied. I made up my mind. I made up my mind. You, you know, there are some students who give excuses like, ah, in the whole exam, out of 200 people, they say it was only 15 people that passed. Only 15 people. And the question I ask is, why didn't you, why were you not, not part of the 15? So out of 200, two, 185 failed. Must you be one, one of the 185? So you, the way I have designed my life, they will pick me first. 
then the others can share the remaining that is available but i will come out first so nigeria's economy is not an excuse in fact interestingly what the loser calls an obstacle is what the winner calls a miracle it depends on how you see it where the loser sees a problem the winner sees an opportunity it was right in the middle of this famine that isaac got his breakthrough i want you to understand that problems are actually opportunities problems are our friends they are not our enemies they come to show us what we can handle and this is the toughest time in nigeria because god has prepared the toughest generation to handle the toughest challenges that's the plain truth we're the most powerful generation that ever rose in this country we're the most knowledgeable we're the sharpest the most intelligent and we're going to handle the problems of this country and the problems of this continent we're going to handle them cheaply this is the wealthiest generation nigeria ever had if you believe it say amen, amen. i believe that in all the families represented here tonight these are the wealthiest people they ever got in those families that's the truth listen to me abraham was a very wealthy man very wealthy man very wealthy man and he left his inheritance left everything and gave everything to isaac but you see famine showed up and collected everything from isaac inherited wealth does not last if you don't know how to handle it the greater part of the wealth abraham gave isaac was not money and material things it was principles principles for success when famine wiped away the whole world isaac reproduced the wealth again listen if you come from a very wealthy family i want you to understand that the greater part of the wealth you will get from your parents is not the material things they have not the cars that they have because in 20 years time those cars will be outdated the greater part of the wealth you can get from your parents is the knowledge that they have the wisdom with which they've been able to produce this wealth that you have met on the ground and this success you have met on the ground it's unfortunate but a whole lot of the time the children of rich people don't turn out well most of the time because they are confused by the wealth of their parents they're, they're, they're wondering why their parents are not giving them twenty thousand or thirty thousand or fifty thousand why their parents are not buying them a car and all of that they don't realize that the greater part of the wealth they will inherit is wisdom understanding and the grace with which your parents have been able to produce what they have produced all right so abraham had taught isaac a few things and with those few things isaac was able to recoup his losses and float back again by the time we are through tonight you will be absolutely sure of one thing till you go to heaven whichever way it goes in this country you will always float yeah. you will always float yeah. whichever way the economy of this country goes you will always rise to the top yeah. and from tonight nigeria's problems will become your own opportunities yeah. while everybody is failing you will rise Amen. you know the, the the darker the darkness the brighter your light shines you, you know the more difficult it becomes in the country the easier it is for winners to rise and to shine and from tonight you'll develop the mentality of a winner Amen. so there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of abraham and isaac went to abimelech king of the philistines in gerah the next thing i notice about isaac is the fact that he made a move he made a move there was serious famine in land he knew it food was going to run out things were going to run out water was going to run out everybody was and people were going to begin to die he moved he moved he made a move he made a move most people don't respond to situations and circumstances well you've got to do something it's good for you to expect god to do something but you've got to do something it's your move that counts you've got to do something you can't sit down and be complaining and be murmuring you've got to do something you've got to make a move 
very very important i like that about isaac isaac did something he was not going to sit down there you know i read about the frog that if you put water on the fire and the water gets to boiling point if you throw a frog inside the frog will jump out of the pot immediately but if you put cold water on the stove and you put the frog inside the cold water it will stay there frogs normally stay inside water anyway if you put fire under that pot and the thing begins to warm gradually the frog will stay there gradually gradually and gradually until the water boils the interesting thing about the frog is that it does not have the wisdom to jump out when the temperature is changing gradually like that so it will stay there until the water boils and it will die the frog has the wisdom to respond immediately to sharp changes but it does not have the wisdom to respond to gradual change as a problem for most people we don't have the wisdom to respond to grad things are depreciating and depreciating gradually depreciating and depreciating that's what happened to most businesses in nigeria that's what's happened to most people in nigeria here gradually gradually the naira was losing its value gradually gradually most people have not been able to respond but once things begin to travel in the opposite direction you've got to, of your life you've got to make a move the, the the thing here that i recognize about isaac is that he had a strong desire to succeed and to be prosperous he had a strong desire you must have a strong desire to succeed you must have a strong desire to succeed and the proof of that desire david said in psalm 27 verse 4 one thing have i desired and that will I seek after. You see, the proof of desire is pursuit. If you really want something, you will go for it. If you are hungry, you won't sit down hoping that somebody will bring the food to put it in your mouth. You will go and look for the food. For as long as you say you are hungry and you sit down the same spot and you don't have the food, you are not yet hungry. When you are really hungry, you will go for it. If you want it, you will go for it. You've, you've shown a little bit of it tonight by coming here. There are people all over this campus who want to succeed. That's especially why most people are here. But their desire for success was not strong enough to push them here. Your own desire was strong enough to push you here. You see, when your desire drives you and you go further than everybody else, you will discover what nobody else is discovering. You will encounter something that others have not yet encountered. You will find things that others have not found. Because it's what you look for that you find. Everyone that seek it, find it the proof of desire is pursuit I, I was on a campus teaching success principles and I, I was giving out tapes free tapes and the last tape i held in my hand i told everybody i asked everybody who wants this many hands went up me 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 i said who wants this tape ah pastor me pastor pastor i said who really 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 wants this tape a lady shot out of her seat that was when everybody else woke up and we're now running after her she came and i gave her the cassette and i told everybody success won't come and meet you you have to go and get it amen <laughs> if you really really want anything in life go for it go for it isaac did not sit down on one spot he made a move he went for it and that's why he got it amen i said amen your crave for information is one powerful indicator of how well you want to succeed the price you are willing to pay how much you are willing to spend on books spend on tapes how much how, how many seminars you are willing to attend those are just simple indicators that show whether you are ready to succeed or not isaac moved i'm not going to sit down here and die here it's not possible i will move i will move i'm going to make a move. i'm going to do something i'm going to try something and then in verse 2 the bible says that the lord appeared to him and said don't go down to egypt live in the land of which i shall tell you that, that listen if you are looking for divine direction let me say this usually god will show up after you have made a move most people are not hearing god because god himself is not even sure whether they will do anything after he has spoken to them 
He's not sure whether they will act on it, whether they will do anything after he's spoken to them. When Isaac made the move, God showed up and said, okay, 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 it seems like you are going the wrong direction. Stay in this place. I think this is the place where, this is the place where I'm going to bless you. God shows up. Let me give you this, this other key. Direction is the key to greatness. Direction is the key to greatness. If I was asked to tell you only one thing tonight and keep the rest. This is the one thing I'm going to tell you. Hearing from God is your key to success. Hearing from God is your key to success. Hearing from God is your key to success. The whole of the Bible is about people hearing from God. The whole of the Bible is about people hearing from God. I've tried many things in life. But I found out the things that have worked best for me are the things God told me to do. God spoke to this. Read through the whole of God spoke to Abraham. God spoke to Isaac. God spoke to Jacob. God spoke to Joseph. God spoke to Daniel. God spoke to Jeremiah. God spoke to Moses. God spoke to Isaiah. God spoke to Jesus Christ. God spoke to Paul. God spoke to Peter. God spoke to Apostle John. God spoke to James. God spoke. God, this is all about God speaking. And if God spoke to them, God will speak to you. And tonight, I like to say this, it's not difficult to hear from God. The only thing is, you have to be able to recognize His voice. He speaks all the time. In this atmosphere, there are all kinds of waves. Radio waves, TV waves. Right inside this atmosphere, it's Echo FM, Rhythm, Cool FM, Ray Power, Star FM, all those FMs are right inside. Oh, there are so many voices. There's a lot of music playing, more music, less talk. All of it is going on in, the, in this atmosphere right now. There's NTA 2, Channel 5, NTA Channel 10, right in this atmosphere. AIT, MITV, DBN, MBI. LTV8 channels, thank you very much. Ah, you try oh. <laughs> all those. So, there are pictures right inside this atmosphere, there are sounds right inside this atmosphere. Why can't you hear them? You need a receiver to be able to pick the voice, and even when you get the receiver, you need to tune the receiver to the right frequency to be able to pick the information. I want you to understand, God speaks all the time. Heaven sends down waves of information all the time. Now the exciting thing, when, I, when, when, I, when, I, when we study the Bible, it seems like the, the, the only means of hearing from God that we pick are spectacular means. Falling into a trance. When you fall into a trance, all your faculties are suspended. You will just become glued on one spot. Then you will see a vision, see an angel. Or sleeping and seeing an angel. Or happen and o having an open vision where your eyes are open like this and you can see spirit beings. Or hearing an audible voice and you can't see who the person is, but you hear this bass voice from heaven. Those are the spectacular means we pick out from the Bible. But interestingly, I found that, that most of the ways by which God speaks are not spectacular. God wants hearing from him to be natural. The first requirement for hearing from God is that you must have a receiver that is in working condition. Now, you are designed to receive from God. That's the truth. You, ha you are what we call a spirit. You see, with your physical body, you can perceive physical stimuli. You have the sense of taste, smell, touch. You have them. Sense of hearing and sight. You have all of them. Now, at the same time, you see, man was squeezed from dust. That natural, physical part of him can relate with the natural world. But the Bible talks, tells us about a particular part of man that was breathed into his body. That's the supernatural part. That's the spiritual part. That is the part that has the ability to relate with God. That's the part that can pick information from heaven. Now, you must ensure that that receiver is in working, working condition. 
sin. When God told Adam, the day that you sin, you will die. He wasn't just talking about physical death. When a person dies, what happens? The person is dead to stimuli. The person loses the functions of all the five senses. Am I right? The person can't smell, can't taste, can't see anymore, can't hear anymore. What God was talking about when he said you will die, God was saying your spiritual senses will cease to function. Adam, you will be cut off from me. Adam, you won't be able to receive from me anymore. That is what happens. When sin enters into the spirit of man, it makes the spirit of man to malfunction. That's man's receiver. And it will be disconnected from God. It will not be able to receive from God anymore. So if you are going to be able to receive from God and recognize God's voice, you must ensure that your receiver is in proper working condition. Tonight, God will destroy the power of sin. In Jesus' name. Now when your receiver is in working condition, the next thing is that you have to ensure that it is tuned to the right frequency. Tuned to the right frequency. If, if, you know what? If you hide my wife behind this wall and she speaks, I will recognize her voice. Why? We've been together for a while. Intimacy. So you need to cultivate intimacy with God. I want you to understand, the same way the radio waves and the TV waves come through sounds and pictures is exactly the same way God's communication comes to us. God communicates with you by giving you spontaneous thoughts and pictures in your mind. Spontaneous thoughts and pictures in your mind. If you carefully, with time, check the thoughts and pictures that flow through your mind, you will be able to recognize how God speaks to you as a person. You will be able to. And then, if you want to recognize how God talks, what God can say and what he cannot say, you have to familiarize yourself with the Bible. It's important. It's very, very important. I know how God speaks to me. And usually, he, he employs my imaginative faculties. It's remarkable. I usually see things before they happen. Or I see things that have happened, which I would normally not have known naturally. I see things. I see things a lot. It's wonderful. I see, and interestingly, most of it is not in dreams. I see things when I'm meditating or when I'm praying, especially when I'm praying or when I'm meditating in the Bible. I see things. I just see something in a flash. Like those spontaneous pictures, those are the ones I know. I know. I get to know so many things. I see things before they happen. And it gives my life direction. It makes a world of difference. And it's my prayer that from tonight, God will cleanse and sanctify your mind. Amen. And make your mind to develop in its receptive ability. Amen. You will recognize the voice of God. Amen. Most of us don't recognize God's voice, but we recognize the devil's voice. Because the devil talks to us every day. Hey, all those negative thoughts that spring up in our minds are from the devil. And when it now comes to hearing from God, we have a serious problem. How many times have you heard the devil's voice before? Saying, I am the devil. I have come to tempt you. Have you ever heard the devil like that before? I've never heard the devil's voice audibly before. And he is also a spirit. He speaks from the supernatural world. How does he make suggestions of sin to me? He puts pictures in my mind. That's how he suggests sin. So if the devil speaks like that, we need to understand. That's exactly how God speaks. That's how God speaks to you. Amen. You are a mobile phone. You have the capacity to receive the signals that come from heaven. You are a walking mobile phone. Amen. Amen. You are a walking mobile phone. God wants to speak to you all the time. And I want to say this. Always obey the voice of your conscience. That voice inside your heart. You know a lot of the time the way we say We say ah, one voice told me to go. One voice told me not to go. One of those voices is the voice of the devil. The other one is God's voice. And you must be able to recognize God's voice. The voice that tells you to go and commit sin can't be the voice of God. It's the voice of the devil. Amen? The voice that tells you to live your life in line with the word of God is God's voice. You will recognize his voice. Amen. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. He says, they will not hear the voice of a stranger. You won't hear the voice of a stranger. Amen. 
in Jesus' name. The suggestion that will mislead you in life, God will not allow you to hear it. The idea that will make you to miss your destiny, God won't allow you to cross your mind. In the name of Jesus. Alright. So after that, God tells Isaac, stay here. The Bible tells us in verse 6, so Isaac dwelt in Gerah. The next key I want to give you is the key of obedience. Total obedience. Absolute obedience. Absolute and total obedience to the word of God and to the voice of God. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, the Bible says, If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. It's obedience to God that has gotten me to where I am. Obedience to God. Obedience to God. I wanted to travel out of this country after my NYSC. I searched for a job. I couldn't get a job on time. I made up my mind I was going to travel. I was going to travel. I, I was going to travel. God mercifully. You know, I, I agreed with the family. They spoke to some friends over there in the U.S. to give, write me an invitation letter. Those ones wrote me an invitation letter. They are pastor. They, hear me. they wrote it. But something went wrong inside. They were asking about my family, and I was not married. They were referring to my family. I said, oh God, if I take this to the embassy, they will ask me where my wife is and my children. And I don't have wife and children yet. I said, please help me to write another one. Till tomorrow, they have not written it. Then God opened another door, so to speak. I got admission into a Bible school in London. I said, come on. I get student visa. The course was for just one year. Before the visa lapses, I'll take a student visa to the U.S. and I will disappear. That's the, that's the truth. I was going to disappear. Everything seemed to work out. In fact, somebody paid and bought a ticket for me. It was just visa stage we got to. The whole thing collapsed. My life too collapsed. I mean, I was confused. I didn't know what to do. I was discouraged. I was confused. I cried. Ah! That was my destiny that was gone. Ah! Pound Sterling. Ah! Oh, God. I, I thought I had suffered enough. This kind of a thing should not be happening to me again. Who is the person who is pursuing me, for God's sake? <laughs> what kind of a thing is this? You know, it took me quite a while to get out of it. And then in our church, we had the fasting and prayer program. That was when I began to ask God, so what do you want me to do now? Interestingly, God answered me. And when God would answer, it's so interesting. I, it, the, thing, the impression came so clear in my heart, I couldn't doubt it was God. And the impression was, I was in a Lauren Quara state then. And the impression was, you are going to Lagos. You are not going to do any engineering job. You are going to pastor a church and I will bless you there. I mean, it was so strong and so clear. I was so sure. I began to tell people, I'm going to Lagos. God is now in Lagos. I'm going to Lagos. <laughs> Hallelujah. I told people God had moved his headquarters to Lagos. He only visits other places now. Amen. <laughs> I was, I was so sure about it. I was so sure. I'm just trying to let you know how vital, how crucial divine direction is and how crucial hearing from God is. I was so sure I was telling people. But you know, God told me I was going to be a pastor. I was going to pastor a church. But my church, the church I attended was not ready to plant a branch in Lagos yet. So I made up my mind I was coming to Lagos all the same. Said I was coming to look for a job. So people were asking me, so you will leave us? What about pastoring? Because I told them I was going to work in an oil company. And they said, if you work in an oil company, you will be going to the oil rig to work. How about pastoring job? I said, no problem. I will start fellowship on the oil rig. <laughs> they teased me. <laughs> offshore fellowship. The, <laughs> the pastor of the offshore fellowship. <laughs> You know, within a few weeks, I came to Lagos. As a well-known family that, that, uh, that I, I, I knew, and I came to meet to their house in Victoria Island. 
and as soon as I got there, I told them, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm waiting on God. I, I want God to, to speak to me. What is the next step in Lagos now? So we, 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 we went out to visit people with the woman of the house. We were sitting at the back of the car. And all of a sudden, I heard that quiet voice in my heart. Look outside. I looked outside. The voice said, can you see poor people in Lagos? I said, yes, there are poor people in Lagos. The voice said to me, if you come to Lagos before I ask you to come, you will suffer. I said, eh? You know the interesting thing? The next day in the morning, I woke up. The madam of the house called me. She said, you told me um, you want to go to the U.S. to do your master's degree? I said, yes. She said, no problem. My own son is already there. But between now and that time that you will go, I want us to do something together. I want us to start a church together in this house. In Victoria Island. It's attractive. With all that my eye had seen before. That was very attractive. And then secondly, she said we will do business together. She used to export as okay. You know, to the U.S. She said, I will build a, I'll put a container in front of the house here. We'll do the business together. So that when you cross over to the U.S. in October, you will establish a branch of the business. And then you will be doing your studies. That was a fantastic offer. She said, I'll give you a house. I'll give you a car. And I'll give you a very good salary. I'll collect every month. You know, but you know the interesting thing? She said, what do you think about it? And I shook my head. Said, I'm sorry. And you said, ah, God won't allow you to miss road. Amen. The reason why I was shaking my head was because God has spoken to my heart the previous day. If you come to Lagos before I ask you to come, you will suffer. Not all that glitters is gold. But God knows everything. It's not every, every opportunity that is your opportunity. It's not every door that you are supposed to walk through. Not every open door you are supposed to walk Some doors you think are supposed to lead you to blessing will lead you outside your, your destiny completely. I, 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 you know, while the woman was speaking, what was occurring to my heart was, look, the Spirit of God was just speaking to my heart. I've called you. Your territory is the whole world. You can't become the pastor of a family, however rich they may be. Your territory is the whole world. Jesus said that his sheep will recognize his voice. They won't hear the voice of a stranger. I could pick out the voice of God. The following day, I packed my bags and baggages and went back. I traveled back. Fifteen months later, I came back to Lagos. Posted here by my church to start a church. A, a exact fulfillment of what God said. And you see, when I was coming, in fact, the day I came to Lagos, I was praying in the middle of the night. And I said, Prince of the devil over Lagos, hear my voice. I have arrived. I did not walk here on my two feet. I flew in on the wings of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I want you to know, devil, that this place cannot contain the two of us. Somebody will have to run away, and you are the one. I will run you out of this city. You can't run me out of this city. You know, I have a particular confidence that I will succeed here. Because it was God that told me to stay here. You will hear God's voice. There is a place called there. For you to break through and to prosper. In 1 Kings 17, there was a serious famine. And God spoke to Elijah the prophet. He said, go down to the brook Cherit. Stay there. He said, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. There's a place called there. A place of supernatural provision. A place of breakthrough. You will find it. He said, go and stay by the brook Cherit. I have commanded the ravens to feed you. You see, if you are not by the brook chariot, when the ravens get there, you will miss your miracle. God has arranged people, arranged circumstances to aid you to succeed. 
but you must be at the right place at the right time to connect with your miracles. When that brook dried up, God now spoke to Elijah, move to Zarephath. I have commanded a widow there to feed you. Listen, ravens are the stingiest birds in existence. They are so stingy, they don't give their own children food. It was those stingy birds God told to go and feed Elijah. You know the lesson God is teaching us there. God will use the most unlikely means to bring your miracle. The people God will use to bless you, however stingy they may be, God will still get your miracle out of them for you. Amen. Amen. But just be sure you are where God wants you to be. God said, Isaac, don't go down. Isaac stayed there in obedience to God. Let's jump to verse 12 and pick one of the most powerful secrets of Isaac's life. Genesis 26 verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. Let's talk about the law of sowing and reaping. The law of sowing and reaping. That law dominates all aspects of life. All areas of life. If you don't understand it, it will work against you. If you understand it and satisfy its conditions, it will work for you. It is the secret to multiplication and the release of potentials. It's a powerful success principle. In Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, the Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Hmm. You know, I saw, I saw this exercising dominion, Genesis 1 28. In that verse, the Bible says, God had just created man. It says, And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it, rule over it and have dominion. Over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every creeping thing that moves on the face of the earth. So, Genesis 1.28 gives us the keys to dominion. Dominion means to be in charge, to be absolutely in control. And I think that's the ultimate in success. But he says that the first step to dominion is be fruitful. Be fruitful. That's the first key to dominion. Be fruitful. Well, generally we've taken that verse to mean that we should give back to children. That's good. But I think that verse means more than that. You see, because that verse is simply saying, until you are fruitful, you can't exercise dominion. But I'm sure you will agree with me that you can't be fruitful if you are not seedful. Because you will never be able to produce fruit if you have no seeds. When God told Adam and Eve, be fruitful, he was telling them you must do something with the seeds that are put around you. If all that God was saying was that we should give back to children, then that verse will simply imply that the more children we have, the more dominion we will have. Am I right? You know the Yoruba version says, Emma BC, Kesi Maresi. Just give back to children. Now, that was the only understanding we had from that verse. We went ahead, we did a good job of it. Now we have overpopulated the world. We are talking about family planning. Now we are talking about family planning. The more children you have, the dominion you will have. Ah. Uh, <laughs> if you're a salary earner in this day and age, uh, the more children you have, the less your dominion. <laughs> if you have a football field in your house, a football team, <laughs> you, you will have can in your house. Consumers Association of Nigeria. That's what you have in your house. <laughs> All right. This is a simple fact. God had just created maize, created green corn, created papa, created cashew, created cocoa, created coffee, created everything in the garden. And God now says to Adam, be fruitful. Do something with all the seeds I've put at your disposal. The more you cultivate these seeds, Adam, the more prosperous you will become. 
It's true, God put human seeds inside him, but he had more than that. He had maize seeds. He had cocoa seeds, cashew seeds, coffee seeds. And God was saying, Adam, these plants you are looking at, especially this maize, if you eat everything, Adam, you have eaten the destiny of your children. Because your children won't have maize to In fact, you won't have maize to eat next year. The maize of next year is inside this one you are seeing. Adam, don't eat everything. Or else, or else you will eat the future. Amen. Amen. Every wise person knows that when you see a seed, there is more to a seed than meets the eye. Inside every seed is a harvest. So this is the interesting principle I've discovered about God. God uses seeds to meet your needs. God uses seeds to meet your needs. If you will exercise dominion, if you will ever succeed in your life, I'm going to ask tonight that you please take some good inventory of the seeds God has positioned in your life. Let me describe the different kinds of seeds that we have. We have human seeds in our physical body. In Genesis 3.15, God was speaking to Eve and telling her, I will put enmity between you and the devil and between your seed and his seed. Seed. He was talking about her children. Seed. So we have human seeds inside us. There are also animal seeds. We know that cows can give birth to cows and monkeys to monkeys. There are also plant seeds. There are seeds of plants and they are great. We have agriculture where we cultivate animal seeds and plant seeds. And just cultivating those ones can make you a millionaire. Isaac specialized in farming. Good. Now, interestingly, let's move to some other ones that may interest you tonight. The fourth kind of seeds. Words are seeds. Words are seeds. <laughs> you know, the realities of your life today is the harvest of the seeds you sowed with your mouth yesterday. Yes, the current circumstance of your life is the harvest of the seeds you sowed with your mouth yesterday. And the realities of your life tomorrow will be the harvest of the seeds you are sowing with your mouth today. Words are seeds. In Proverbs chapter 18 verse 20, the Bible says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So, mouths can produce fruit. It says, And with the increase of his lips shall he be satisfied. If a man is not satisfied, something is wrong with his mouth. Now verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. Your mouth can produce fruit. In the parable of the sower in Matthew 13, and also Mark chapter 4, it says, The sower soweth the word. Yeah, it was a parable of the sower, talking about the person that sows seeds. And then he said, The seed is the word of God. The sower soweth the word. Words are seeds. By the way, let me even ask you a question. If I bring some quantity of maize here today and I ask you, where did this one come from? What will you say? It came from some other maize that was planted before it. And then that one, where did it come from? It came from another one that was planted before. It. And that one, where did it come from? If we keep tracing it like that, where will we get to? The Garden of Eden. Good. So the first set of maize seeds, where did they come from? They grew out of the ground. What made them to grow out of the ground? Thank you. God spoke into the ground and the maize grew out. Words are seeds. Superior, supernatural, powerful seeds that have the power to dominate your life. The words you sow with your mouth today, you will harvest it tomorrow. So don't Good. Some people were bold enough to say amen. Most people couldn't say that. Because we know what we are saying with our mouths. Hey, these lecturers will kill us. They will finish us in this school. Ah, things are really hard. Hey, everybody is failing. Ah, this country is hard. Hey, man, they suffer. Ah, you better watch what you are saying with your mouth because you are so insane. You Listen, 
watch out for the students who are saying positive things with their mouths today. Five, ten years' time, you will see the difference. It's inevitable. It's, I, when I was in school, I wrote on my notebooks, millionaire in training. I'm serious. I told people I was a millionaire. I told people I'm, a, I'm not a local champion. I'm a world champion. Some people are graduates and they, are local, they just get missing in action. You know, relegated to a mediocre life for the rest of their lives. Village teacher somewhere. I told people I'm not a local champion. I am a world champion. You know, after some time, when things began to look up for me a little bit, somebody said, ah, so those things Pastor Sam was saying, so they are true. I said, sit down there. It is the one I said before that you had. I'm already saying new ones. I'm already saying new ones. Amen. Amen. Help me to tell your neighbor, talk straight. talk straight. And then tell the person, mind your language. Mind your language. Amen. Amen. Words are seed. I wrote an exam. I came out of the exam hall. My classmates said, ah, the man finished us. In fact, they said, the man killed us. I said, he didn't kill me. Ah, they said, he killed all of us. I said, he didn't kill me. Interestingly, that semester, that was the most difficult paper I wrote. I did my HND in, in the school where I didn't do my OND. The question... For that, the questions for that semester were based on the notes of what they did in OND. And I didn't do my OND there. I didn't have access to the notes at all. I got into the examination hall. I saw those questions and sat down. and began to speak in tongues. Now listen. According to your faith, so be it unto you. For me... I believe that people fail and pass examinations before they enter the exam hall. I believe so. And I had passed that paper before I entered the exam hall. According to the word of God. I'll call myself what the word of God calls me. I'm, not, I'm the head and not the tail. I will be above pass mark only. I cannot be beneath. That one was already settled. So I sat down there praying in tongues for a few minutes. And then a divine idea came to me. I remember the verse of the Bible that says, Holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. I said, Holy Spirit, move me and I'm going to write. After a few minutes, some fine ideas began to come into my mind. So I started writing. I was not sure whether it was in the notebook or not, but I just started writing. writing my, and I answered five questions fully and revised the answers, my own answers. Revised them. And submitted. I now stepped outside and some people said, hey, Mr. So-and-so killed all of us. I said, he didn't kill me. And they said, he killed us. I said, okay, he didn't kill me. Ah. There's a verse of the Bible that says, why seek ye the living among the dead? Since he had killed all of them and I was not dead, I just left them and walked away. Amen. Walked away. We were two departments combined. Almost 90 students. Two departments combined. When the results came out, I had the highest score. I had a powerful A. According to the seeds I sowed with my mouth. Amen. Maybe I should give you an extra gist. In the, in the night, I went to the football field. <laughs> I spoke in tongues for a few minutes. Then I called the name of the lecturer. Mr. So-and-so, in the name of Jesus, report here now. I call you in the spirit realm. I wrote your paper this morning. And by my agreement with God, I made up my mind, I'm scoring an A in this paper. So I want to give you the instruction. Whichever way you mark this paper, make sure I score an A. Is that okay? I said, is that okay? You are dismissed. You can use your mouth to organize your destiny. Somebody says, eh, poor people like us. Ah. Look, I used to say that before. I used to talk like that before. Say, don't mind those rich people. 
They are the ones spoiling this country. One day I said that, don't mind those rich people. Then I heard that voice in my heart again. If they are those rich people, who are you? The poor people. I said, ah, ah. Lord, I repent. From today. So, so I've been telling people, if you hear them talking about those rich people anywhere, they are talking about us. Amen. <laughs> Words are seeds. Many parents don't know how much havoc they cause in the lives of their children. Look at this dummy. Look at this idiot. Look at this. I can't give back to an idiot. Kind begets kind. My children are blessed. Amen. <laughs> use positive words to organize your desk. Don't, use, don't ever use negative words on yourself. I was walking in our church one day. Two of our brothers were having a discussion. And, and one just said out, Ah, I just said, poor me. I stopped there. I said, are you poor? He said, I'm sorry, sir. Be sorry for yourself. He said, how can you be calling yourself poor? You can't stay around me and be a poor person. Amen. Words are seeds. So you watch out. They may say you have big mouth. Use your mouth to organize your destiny. Don't allow anybody to say a negative thing around you. You know, another form of seeds, our actions are seeds. All our actions are seeds. All the things we do are seeds. In Matthew 7, verse 12, Jesus said, Whatsoever you want other people to do to you, do you exactly that to them. What Jesus said there is very serious. They call it the golden rule. What was Jesus saying? What you want people to do for you is a harvest. You must learn to sow seeds before you get the harvest. It's impossible for you to get the harvest without the seed. So you must learn to sow a seed into other people's lives before you get a harvest. If you want people to smile at you, you, you to smile at them. Have you ever tried it? That's a harvest you get instantly. Except for a wicked person. There's hardly anybody you will smile at who will not smile back at you instantly. Try it on your neighbor. Give verses. smile. Okay, because the Bible says the wicked man hardened his face. If you are not wicked, you should be able to smile. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good. So our actions. If you love, you will get love in return. If you hate, you will get hatred in return. You know, Jesus was talking about forgiveness in Luke chapter 6. You read from verse 35 forgiveness. And he got to the point in verse 38 where it says, give and it will be given back to you. Good measure pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. If you give money, you get money back. If you give love, you get love back. If you give hatred, you get it back. If you give criticism and you run other people down, you will get it back. Good measure pressed down, shaking together and running over, shall others give criticism to your bosom. That's the way it works. So our actions, listen, what you are doing, you're coming to school now is a seed. Many people don't know. You will get the harvest. Yeah. All the verses of the Bible you are reading now are seeds. Sir, you're serving. This fellowship is a seed. I served the fellowship when I was in school. It was a seed. I've gone beyond that stage now. But what I'm getting now is a harvest. I served somebody. When you work for another person, what you are doing is a seed. Some lazy workers don't know that. And then they'll be telling them, say, ah, when my own comes, when I start my own company, then go agree. Then go agree for what? What you are sowing now is what you will reap. If you are lazy, all the people you will hire will be lazy people. If you are cheating your boss now, they will cheat you tomorrow. It's, it's serious. That's the way life works. If you are rebellious and disobedient to authority now, just ex expect exactly the same thing. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over later. Only except if God intervenes. What we sow today will reap tomorrow. I should like to say this. Sin is a seed. Its harvest is inevitable. Mm. The other type and the last type of seed I will mention. Our thoughts are seeds. Our ideas are seeds. Our ideas are seeds. Isaac sowed in the land and he reaped a hundredfold. How do I know ideas are seeds? 
When a person invents a thing, we call that thing the person's brain child. It's interesting. Brains give birth to children. But you can't get a child without a seed. So what is the seed of every invention? Ideas. When God wants to prosper you and give you a harvest of finances and miracles in your life, he throws ideas into your mind. It's powerful. Ideas are seeds. Ideas are... I want to say this. We take natural children so serious that when a woman cannot bear a child, we look at her with some stigma as if something is wrong with her. But I want to say this to you tonight. Mental infertility is worse than physical infertility. Infertility of the mind is worse than infertility of the womb. People say they want to give birth to children so as to preserve their name. Great. But the best way to preserve your name is to bring forth some inventions that will bless humanity. I don't know the names of the natural children of Henry Ford who started the Ford Motor Company. But I know the names of his brain children. I don't know the names of the natural children of Suichiro Honda who started the Honda Motor Company. But I know the names of his brain children. I know Honda Civic. I know Honda Prelude. I know Honda Accord. I know Honda Video. I know Honda Legend. I know Honda CRV. The products of a man's mind, his brain children, they are still with us today, prospering and sustaining hundreds, if not thousands, of families around the world. Your brain was designed to produce some particular kinds of seeds, maybe musical ideas. There may be drawings, art, artist impressions. They may be in the manufacturing sector. Somebody here is going to design cars. Someone here is going to design computer programs. Someone here is going to design clothes. There's someone here. You hear Gucci, Hugo, but your own name will become a designer name. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to understand, however terrible the famine may be in Nigeria, once God gives you breakthrough ideas, you will prosper. Amen. You will flourish. In the time of famine, Isaac sowed in the land and he reaped a hundredfold. I'm going to pray over the seeds that God has put in your life tonight. The power of God is going to come on those seeds. I'm going to pray over your mind and your brain. I'm going to ask God to begin to throw seeds into your mind. To throw ideas into your mind to throw visions and dreams into your mind. All the great organizations and, and, and enterprises of the world started in people's mind. I'm going to pray over your mind today. Every mind that has malfunctioned, I'm going to ask the power of God to activate your mind tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stand up to your feet with me and we're going to pray. God bless you.